anywhere else. But it's a pleasure to see what an illustrious institution you have, of which you're celebrating the gold, you've reached the Golden Jubilee. So congratulations for the service which your father and your entire family has rendered to Coimbatore and this country. You have a long way to go with your young son taking over or following you. I'm sure you're going to be celebrating one day, what do you call, platinums? <laughs> yes, God willing, you will. So thank you. It's, it's always great to know great success stories from around the country. So therefore, thank you for giving me this opportunity, uh, even though it's through Archana and Jyoti and my friends that I made it here. It's also a very good opportunity to share such great success stories when one travels around the country to say, Maine kya dekha, kidar dekha, kitna acha dekha. So it's, it's always a, a great thing. It's good to have such an experience. So therefore, I'm truly, personally privileged. You asked me to speak on women empowerment. I gave this thought to my head. Ab idhar aajo sir. Thank you. Idhar, idhar. Daini. Idhar. <laughs> so I gave this thought to my head, women empowerment, and then my mind started to ro ro search around. It was not Googling, it was searching within me. How do I approach it? And you know, it struck me only now sitting here. There are a lot of thoughts coming in my mind in what way I approach it, because this is not the first time I'm talking about women empowerment. But how do I, what is it that excites me today, which I can drive the message? So sitting here, I just took your, this notebook right now and listed what I was thinking, how I would approach the subject. So I decided to th approach the subject in, in this manner, not what is empowerment as far as women are concerned. What is it that causes disempowerment? I started to come into my, it come into my head, what causes disempowerment? We know what causes empowerment. But let's identify in my head what causes disempowerment. And when I gave this, this idea start to come, what causes disempowerment, then the answer start to come, then there are two sections in, of, uh, two sections of women, two segments of women who are not similar when it causes disempowerment. One section is we the doctors, we the educated women. And second is we the have nots. So women in India are into two categories. You have the haves like us, like us sitting here, and you have the have nots not sitting here. And what causes disempowerment to both? Let me tell you. What causes, so I, then I start to think, let me share with you what causes disempowerment to us because we're still not empowered, to my mind. If you're not, then what is it that causes disempowerment even to educated women? So I started to list out, and I started to divide the page into two. And I, the, this is how long the list is. Imagine what a long list this is of what causes disempowerment to the haves and the have-nots. Now, in the haves, I'll then tell, share with you what is it that I did in my personal life which ensured no disempowerment. What is it that I did from beginning till now that ensures that nobody disempowers me as a woman? I choose to disempower myself, it's my choice. But I will not let anybody else disempower me because I'm a woman. How did I do that? But I want to first of all list out the disempowerment issues of a have-not woman, a woman who doesn't have anything much. What is it that disempowers her? I believe, because let me share with you that this experience of mine comes from, as Dr. Rao in his introduction mentioned, that I do work as from my two foundations with women who have nothing, who have nothing. They're poor. They're illiterate, they're backward, they're, they're financially dependent, mothers of lots of children, saddled with families which totally control them, have no right on their own productivity, are not mobile at all. So forget about empowerment, they are actually trapped. They're actually imprisoned. 
they are imprisoned in their own life. They have no assets. Because I deal with women in rural areas through my Navjoti India Foundation. I work with women in prison in the Tihar jail and others. I work with women in suburb, uh, suburban areas where they are uh, living in slums. It's a life. And I've, uh, it's a life which is truly, in a way, imprisoned. Imprisoned in their own lifetime. I see them imprisoned and I do not see, see them seeing a light of the day. So what are those areas which disempower them? First of all, as very rightly said by my predecessor speaker, birth, very correctly, where you're born, where this have-not woman is born, starts with disempowerment. Second, what kind of parents is she born to? If her parents think she's a liability, her disempowerment begins right away. Third, opportunities, she has none. She has a school which is far away, and if she goes to a school, there's no toilet, so she wants to come back. Or there's a school which does not, they, it's a co-education, and the parents say, nahi jana, because udar ladke hai, boys hai. So she disempowers. So she disempowers because the school is co-ed. The school is far. The school doesn't have a female toilet. So she's disempowered right away. None of her fault so far. She's disempowered because women will tease her on the way. It happens in Delhi, my friends. I run a community college. This is coming from not the absolute poor, but all right, not people living in Parliament Street and Connaught Place. But their parents don't want to send them even to vocational school. Why? Because on the way, the boys may tease you. So they say, sit at home, because the boy will tease you. So I, in my, in my, my foundation bus, has to drop them to the nearest places to see that they still come for vocational school and that they can be dropped. So what is this disempowerment? Is larger sense of insecurity. Then economics, they have no money, they inherit nothing. Women in India don't inherit, boys by birth inherit. A boy, a son by birth is considered inheritance of father's property, name, fame, everything. Right, Dr. Up? <laughs> you, yeah, you inherited it. Did your sister inherit it? Good. You don't have a sister, fortunately. <laughs> but you would have been a, you see, I'm not saying this is indicative. The boy is considered as a natural inheritor of the father. When did a girl consider be considered as a natural inheritor? Never. She's considered as a, a bird of a bird who's going to fly away. It's a boy who's considered. This is a psyche. So disempowerment begins from her own gender. So she has no economics, she has no money, she has lack of skills. The only skill she has is cook. What can she cook? Like her mother. That's it. And that also she learns from her mother. What can mummy cook? So she naturally learns to cook. But she's not a professional chef, sorry. She's a home cook, that's it. So she, the only skill she has inherited, inher what she inherits is cooking, I think. Boys inherit property, girls inherit cooking, <laughs> girls inherit kitchen. Then, look, after all this kind of upbringing of disempowerment, now comes a man in her life who controls her completely. Who now decides what name she has? Even the name changes. Even the first name changes. Forget about surname. Even the first name changes. Because now the mother-in-law says, this first name is astrologically not correct. So, so far it had been okay, but now with coming into the another's life, that name, the identity totally changes. So disempowerment even of her own identity. Then healthcare. Uh, I was traveling on the flight. The person was on my right, on my left extreme window C. 